What's going on everyone, I'm Cosmo, welcome back to Trailmakers, and today I'm going to show you how I built a working 4 cylinder engine and then we'll put it into a vehicle and see if it can actually power it, so stay tuned for that. Now when I say piston engine in this case, I actually mean an engine design that simulates the standard internal combustion piston engine, but in my case the pistons are actually these tractor beams. Now as you guys can see here, I started making a crankshaft with two bearings on either side. For the crank pins and the counterweights, I actually used stackable helicopter engines because they allow me to place things on their sides, which came in very handy when it came time to mount these pistons for my, uh, you know, my Conrod simulation. Now I also had to simulate a wrist pin so that this whole thing, you know, can facilitate the motion that the pistons are going to experience, and uh, thus I used these hinges, and obviously my, uh, my magnets here are the pistons themselves. So this is all fine and dandy. As you guys can see, it's actually basically a twin twin. Because if you split these up into pairs, they're 180 offset, just like a twin would be. And unfortunately, due to the way Trailmakers lets me, you know, customize the angles and stuff, I couldn't really do a proper firing order. Uh, so basically, two of these are going to be firing at once. I don't know what to tell you. It's a twin twin. We also have one major uh, problem at this stage of the design. And it's the fact that we don't actually have any cylinders. Oh my goodness. And we're just launching pistons into the stratosphere. <laughs> so as you can see, oh my god, there goes another one. <laughs> there it is. Uh, so as you guys can see, you know, we have a nice, uh, nice crank motion here. But now we need to restrict the, oh my goodness, the pistons uh, to actually move up and down where we want them to. Thus began my journey to figure out how to build some cylinders. And as you guys can see right here, what I actually did was I tried using blocks that aren't going to connect to the magnets on the inside because otherwise the magnets can't move up and down, right? So genius me, what I tried doing, I tried using portholes because they don't have any mounting points on the front nor the back. And I was like, no, you know what? This is perfect. We're going to restrain the magnets inside these portholes and it's going to be perfect, right? Right? <laughs> so as you guys can see, uh, the pistons aren't even moving up and down. I'm assuming there's just way too much friction. The other issue is that the pistons, the actual in-game pistons, are stretching. And uh, that's not good. They're stretching away from the hinges. They're doing some funky stuff. So I had to figure something else out. Now, my next idea was to give the pistons a little bit more movement freedom, you know? So I decided to make like a diamond shape. Well, basically a square rotated 45 degrees uh, to kind of, you know, constrain the pistons, but not really, you know, cause a lot of friction. And I thought that this might work. Also, can we appreciate how this kind of looks like a VR6 engine? Except I guess it would be a VR4. I try to build an inline four, right? But because of the way this is all set up, it ended up being kind of like a weird V inline four. I don't even know, but that doesn't matter. Let's see how these cylinders worked. Oh my goodness. So they started moving. However, uh, they just started jamming and doing some other silly stuff. And I realized very quickly that this was also a very uh, self-destructing way of doing it. So I came up with a pretty genius idea, if I do say so myself. What we have here, and let me get rid of some of these blocks, is I've got my magnets on skis, which are frictionless, just moving around inside these, uh, you know, I guess compartments that I've laid out as a maze. So if I drop this back down and I try to power this, as you guys can see, I get extremely smooth action. The pistons are going up and down, the crankshaft is doing its thing. Now, one thing that I actually did, guys, as well, is I swapped the pistons out for just regular rods because I did not like the compression that they were doing. You know, they were acting kind of funny. So I just replaced them with, uh, with rigid rods, and that seems to have helped quite a bit as well. Doesn't that just look mesmerizing? Doesn't, Doesn't that, that just look, look mesmerizing? mesmerizing? But now, I had to figure out how to automate this thing, so the next iteration was born. Now, if you guys watched my Magnet Rotary Engine video, and if you haven't, I'll have the link down below, then you'll know that Magnet Engines and Trail Makers actually need to be technically two separate creations, because magnets only interact with things that aren't attached to the same creation. So as you can see up here, I've built somewhat of a floating cylinder head, uh, which the magnets are hopefully going to repel from. My initial idea was to try and use repulsion to try and move the pistons up and down, and it kind of worked, not really. 
if I magnetize my cylinder head here and I break that apart and I actually try to move one of the pistons manually, it kind of works. One thing that I found though is that for some reason, repulsion is not as good as magnetization. The next stage was basically figuring out how to time the engine so that, you know, the magnets activate when they need to. I built a makeshift flywheel, which, uh, you know, in retrospect, was not the best flywheel. Now, it may be heavy, but it's not big enough, and you'll see exactly what I mean very soon here. So, what I did here is I actually attached distance sensors to try and activate the magnets when, uh, you know, when they're atop that center, to try and have them repel from the top of the cylinder head. So, if I move this manually, as you can see, when the piston reaches top dead center, the distance sensor actually lights up and sends a signal for the magnet to push itself away. This did not really work as expected either. I'm starting to think that these distance sensors are not a very reliable source of timing. But here, let me demonstrate anyway. Yeah, this thing locks up a lot, just because the timing is way, way off. Let's try this nonsense again. And as you can see, it just, it just doesn't want to go. It's a failure. And I almost gave up at this stage. Did however make one change though, I actually moved uh, this crank pin counterweight uh, setup from up here to down here. This basically separated the strokes of the, you know, the pairs of the pistons a little further away from each other. And uh, I think ultimately that made the engine more stable, but it was still not working. This, this still did not work. Now I knew that ultimately I had to get away from using the distance sensors because they're just not reliable whatsoever and I finally decided to use the angle sensors. The angle sensors made it so that I can very easily time when the magnets need to turn on and off and essentially time the engine that way. Now one thing that I also realized is that repulsion is not that good. So I basically had to use magnetization to bring the pistons back up to the cylinder head. The only thing however is that this kind of ran but it locked up and I did not understand why for the life of me. I wrestled with this for a very long time until I decided to use one little piece from my other engine, the flywheel. <laughs> uh, so I actually took this flywheel that I built off the rotary engine, I made it its own creation, and I ended up putting it onto the four cylinder engine. And boy, did I get amazing results, guys. Let's check it out. So if I magnetize my head to my cylinder block, I release the detachable blocks and I, uh, I press Q, the engine actually starts up and it runs, guys. It freaking runs. <laughs> this blew my mind. It's crazy that this even started working because all I needed was a heavier flywheel just to rotate the whole crankshaft over until the pistons were within their working range again. Oh, this is awesome. I was so happy when this actually started working, but I wasn't fully happy with how the head kind of bounces up and down. So I decided to create a bit of a different mechanism for that. Boom, and thus the final iteration of this engine was born. So as you can see, I've got some clamps on the sides with some of those locking pins that I used to hold the, uh, the engine down to the ground. Look at that. This works fantastic, guys. I am so, so stoked on the fact that this actually worked out. And now I want to paint it up. I want to make it nice. And then I want to do a bit of experimenting with you guys that I actually haven't done myself yet. So I'm going to spice this thing up a little bit. And then uh, let's, let's see it in its final form. There we go, guys. It's actually kind of funny that both of my engines so far have been at basically max complexity and they're both done, you know, so I don't really need to add anything else. I could make this much lower complexity if I made this a two piston engine, uh, but check it out. I actually did add another magnet to the side here just to make things a little bit more sturdy and it does look kind of cool. So we're just going to go with it. I even have lights that show, uh, you know, when the pistons are firing. And on this side, I made a bit of a cutout. Well, not a cutout, I just made the pieces see-through so that you can see the pistons move up and down. Pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> I've got the seat hidden in the side now. Oh man, this, uh, this makes me so happy that this actually works. Now, I have no real throttle control. I don't have anything like that, but I did want to mess around with some things because I haven't actually tried them myself. I noticed that my, uh, my AND gates here 
can output a value that's between 0 and 1. And I'm almost wondering if I can control the strength of the magnets that way. So I'm going to set them all to say, I don't know, 0 0.25. And let's start this thing up. I don't... Is that actually slower? I don't know. Let's, uh, let's get out of this guy. And let's spawn another one. No, honestly, they... They look about the same, but we'll try once more and just set the value to something really, really low. There you go. The output is set to 0.05. Nope, it still just does the same thing. So I guess the only other thing that I could really do is adjust the timing of all four of my angle sensors. But these are so well tuned, guys. I don't think I'm actually going to touch them right now. Maybe in the future, I will make a design that is, you know, a little bit more accessible and I can mess around with all these values. Uh, but for now, I kind of like my engine the way, uh, you know, the way it's working and it's working pretty well. It's uh, It's got a nice consistent stable speed and i think we should keep it at that but if you guys do want to see more of this piston engine stuff with or without magnets maybe i'll try building an actual piston actuated engine then let me know in the comments down below and uh, that could be something that i do in the future now for those of you that are curious about the timing of this i can actually uh, kind of demonstrate here what happens so as you can see right now uh we have the first and the third angle sensors actually activated so here it's not lit up and if i bring it over just a little bit it lights up and in this position pistons one and three are now magnetizing themselves all the way up to the head and if i keep keep rotating it as you can see that is actually off now so one and three are off and letting the momentum of the flywheel bring the engine back over so now if i keep rotating it as you can see there is a bit of a dead spot in the timing which the main reason for that is i just wanted the timing to be kind of conservative and i didn't want it to rip the engine to shreds so if i keep rotating it as you can see two and four are now lit up and two and four are the ones that are on their stroke up and are magnetizing themselves to the head. And then the cycle repeats. As you can see, the values are fairly vague and uh, could definitely use some more precise adjustment. But now, I really want to try to put this on a vehicle and see if it can actually power some kind of vehicle, guys. Because we have a flywheel here that looks, uh, looks oddly like a wheel that could be, you know, placed on the ground and dragged along the ground so all i gotta do is add another one to this side and build some kind of frame so let's do this i have no clue if this is going to work but i'm excited for it Oh my goodness. Well, guys, I had to whip out the complexity mod for this one. I certainly exceeded complexity by a teeny bit. Uh, I could have made this just a two-cylinder engine, and then I probably would have had the complexity to build, uh, you know, this frame right here. But hey, I've got a frame, I've got steering, I've got wheels up front, I've got two of these massive flywheels, which are going to act as my driving wheels, and let's see this thing drive. So because it doesn't have a clutch of any kind, I'm actually doing this the very old school way of having pistons on the back that raise and lower the whole creation. Uh, this will let it spin up and then I'll drop it down and we we should move, we should move. So let's, uh, let's do my locks here, perfect. Excellent, let's start the engine up, lovely. And uh, I can lower my pistons now, and we should be able to go. Oh my goodness. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here we go. <laughs> I can even steer. 
I can even steer this thing around. It hasn't broken yet. It's telling me that it's broken, but I don't see any broken parts, do you guys? I don't. This is hilarious. This is like a very primitive go-kart type deal, you know? I didn't want to add more weight or more things to it because I think that might slow things down a little bit and possibly even stall the engine out. But the fact that this works is- Oh no! Oh no! We lost half our pistons! We lost half our power. We're running on a twin now. <laughs> it's still going though. It's still going. <laughs> uh, going like 40, 40, 30 kilometers an hour now. Oh, there you go. 45 I saw. Excellent. So unlike with my rotary engine, uh, I built a piston engine that can actually, uh, you know, it can actually move a vehicle. That's, that's kind of fantastic. Oh, I love this. This is so great. <laughs> I can't believe I've actually gotten like a magnet piston engine working and moving a vehicle that uh, that's all I ever wanted for this video guys <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed the video let me know in the comments down below if you have any ideas about how to improve a pist or I guess a magnet powered piston engine once again piston in the traditional sense not in the uh, you know, game part sense, where the pistons are the actuators. But that might be something that I try next. I think it's going to be a lot harder, but I am up for the challenge. So if you guys enjoyed this one, once again, let me know in the comments down below. Give me all your thoughts and ideas, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. I actually can't believe this works. Uh, I didn't think it would work on any other terrain. This is amazing.